Hi, this is Michael Fisher for SavingInvesting.com and one of the things that's often not quite intuitive at the outset or that may be um, a bit unclear or confusing even is why bond prices might fall if bond yields were to go up or if interest rates rise. Um, and if we focus on, we're going to go through this in, with a very quick example, if we focus on government bonds or risk-free bonds where it's assumed there, that there's no risk of default and no risk of the interest rate or principal not being repaid, um, we can show quite easily, I think, why bond prices fall when interest rates rise. Let's say that the interest rate or yield for a one-year period is 2%. Um, that there's typically an interest rate for every time period so for one year there might be an interest rate of 2% as in this example there would be an interest rate most likely that might be the same or different for two year periods, three year periods, four year periods, five year periods, ten year periods and so forth and these interest rates for different time periods could be plotted on a graph and that would be called a yield curve but let's assume getting back to our example that the right interest rate for a one year period with no risk is 2% um, if we have $100 today, <clears throat> then that $100 with a 2% interest rate would turn into $102 in one year. In other words, $100 plus 2% of $100 is $102. Or we could calculate it by saying 100 times 1 plus 2% um, or one, 100 times 1 1.02 is 102. So in other words, we can get from the 100 of today to a future value of 102 by multiplying by 1 plus the interest rate. And in fact, $100 today in this example is equivalent to receiving $102 um, in a year. And this is how we compound money as well. The 100 becomes 102, the following year gains interest again, etc., 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 and grows and grows and grows, and actually grows quicker and quicker. Because the $100 in this example becomes 102, we could say that receiving $100 is equivalent to receiving $102 in one year. And instead of going from the 100 to the $102, we could go from the 102 in one year back to the 100. And what we could say is that receiving $102 in one year is equivalent to receiving $100 today. And the way that we would calculate back from the 102 in the future is we would discount that future payment and divide by 1.02. So instead of compounding to go from 100 to 102 um, and adding interest, we would take the payment in the future of 102 and figure out what that's worth to us today by dividing by 1 plus the interest rate. And in this case, that would be 102 divided by 1.02, which gives us 100. So we can go from the 100 to the 102 and from the 102 to 100. So using this method of dividing by 1 plus the interest rate, we can take any future cash flow and see what it would be worth to us today. In this example, getting $102 in one year with a 2% interest rate is the same to us as getting $100 today because $100 today turns into $102. So whether we get the $102 in a year or the $100 today, either way in a year, theoretically, we would have $102. Now, what is a bond? A bond is just a series of cash flows, of future cash flows. So if we know how to go from the 102 in one year back to 100 by dividing by 1 plus the interest rate, we can, um, we can basically take any series of future cash flows and bring them back to a value today by dividing by 1 plus the interest rate for the, appro the appropriate number of times for the time period. Let's say in our example where we get 102 where of a cash flow of 102 in one year, what would happen if the interest rates shot up very quickly to 5%. In that case, the $102 in one year would no longer be worth 100 to us, but it would be worth 102 divided by 1.05 to us, which is in effect, which is actually $97.14. So with higher interest rates of 5%, and if we bring that future cash flow back to today, it's actually worth less to us. And why does that make sense? Because if interest rates were 5%, then if we had $100 today, that would turn into 105 in one year. So getting 102 in one year is worth less to us than it, than it was previously with the 2% interest rate because we could take $100 and make 105 out of it. Therefore, 102 is not worth 100 to us anymore. 
It's worth 102 divided by 1.05, which in this case works out to $97.14. So as we can see, if the interest rate is higher and shoots up very quickly, that future payment is worth less to us because we could get more interest by having the cash today. So in other words, um, the future payment would have to be higher in order for us to, for it to still be worth the same amount to us. So in other words, if we take future cash flows and we bring them back to today with a higher interest rate, we're dividing by one plus a higher interest rate and therefore ending up with a smaller number. Now getting back to a typical bond, a bond is a series of cash flows or at least one cash flow in the future and when we discount those future cash flows back to, to, to today when we divide by one plus a higher interest rate like we did in the example of 102 divided by 1.05 we end up with a smaller number so and that's why if interest rates go up or the yield goes up or the discount factor goes up the value of a future cash flow or the value of a series of future cash flows or the value of a risk-free bond is less to us. If there was risk involved, we'd have to, if the bond was not risk-free or the cash flows weren't risk-free, we'd have to figure out in other things like risk premiums, risk premia and, and risk of default and so forth. But this is conceptually why um, bond prices fall when interest rates rise. And it's also conceptually why future cash flows are worth less to us when the interest rates are higher or when the opportunity cost of not having the cash today is higher.